So there is a lot of breathing techniques in Demon Slayer, and the beauty of Demon Slayer is the fact that breathing techniques are not inherently stronger than each other, it's just about how you use them. Insect breathing can be just as powerful as flame breathing if used in the right hands. And while some people might think that stone breathing is one of the strongest techniques out there, that's only because Gyome is the person who uses it. Every breathing technique, regardless of the technique, is up to the skill of the person using it. The only difference in skill techniques is how you learn them, because they are inherently different techniques. However, this rule does have one exception, and that one exception is sun breathing. Now, sun breathing, for those of you who are anime only, is something we've seen briefly. We know that Tanjiro is beginning to train in it. However, for those of you who have finished the manga, you'll know that sun breathing is unequivocally the strongest breathing form. But why is sun breathing the strongest breathing form? How was it created and what is its story? And most importantly, how did it end in Tanjiro's hands? Before I answer all of those questions and more in a spoiler-free way, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you want to answer the age-old question of how much Nick content can you consume, guys, please, for me, follow my two other YouTube pages, one of which, NC Gamer 23 where instead of talking anime, I play video games, and the other, Hammer's Collection, where instead of talking anime, I just build things from anime. By the way, if you notice anything different with my backdrop, guys, please drop a comment. It's gonna be a little Easter egg for this video. So, sun breathing, also known as Hinokami Kagura, or the Dance of the Fire God. What is it? Is it just stronger flame breathing or is it something entirely different? Well, before we get into what sun breathing is, we're gonna start these videos in the way that we usually start these videos, at the beginning. You see, sun breathing was created 500 years before the timeline of Demon Slayer. This was during the Sengoku era, AKA the 1300s. This era is also referred to as the golden age of Demon Slayers. You see, sun breathing was created by a very important man in the Demon Slayer universe, kind of like the Hagoromo of the Demon Slayer universe, in that he was the strongest demon slayer ever born. This man was named Yurichi Suchikuni, and he had a twin brother, Michikatsu. That'll be important later. You see, in the Sengoku era, having twins was actually a bad omen. They figured one child would turn out evil and one child would turn out good. And unfortunately for Yurichi, he was born with a weird mark on his forehead while Michikatsu was born completely regular. So Yurichi's father said he would kill Yurichi in order to prevent him from ever growing up to be evil. However, Yurichi's mother flew to Yurichi's side and said, no, don't kill him. We'll just send him to live with the monks when he turns 10. However, as you probably know, that odd mark on Yurichi's head wasn't a curse, it was actually a Demon Slayer mark. And not just any Demon Slayer mark, the most powerful Demon Slayer mark of all time. See, because while a standard Demon Slayer mark may increase your physical prowess and your perception for Yurichi, it was that times two. Yes, Yurichi, like every other person with a Demon Slayer mark, got better physical prowess and perception, but on top of that, he also got access the transparent world. The first person ever, mind you, to have access to transparent world. Now the question becomes, for those of you who haven't read the entirety of the manga, what is transparent world? And don't worry, none of this is spoilers. It's kind of just explaining power systems that come along later. Transparent world is a bit like X-ray. Essentially, those who have access to transparent world can see into the bodies of everyone. And not like X-ray glasses where you can see through people's clothes. No, they can see your organs and your muscles and your blood and your arteries. And because people who have access to transparent world can see your muscles and all of your organs, they can predict what you're gonna do. Essentially, they can see how your muscles are contracting and predict exactly where you're gonna go with your strike. And because of this, those with transparent world access kind of have an extra sensory perception. But it's also very important should somebody have, oh, I don't know, more than one heart? Think of Kakuzo from Naruto. Being able to use transparent world on him would show you exactly where all five of his vital organs are. And that's important for later on. However, Yurichi's parents didn't know that he had access to Transparent World or that he was physically stronger than his brother Michikatsu. So he was fed poorer food than Michikatsu and kept in a really small room. Because Yurichi was raised so poorly, he never spoke and therefore everyone thought he was deaf. And because everyone thought he was deaf, Akino, Yurichi's mother, not Akino from High School DxD, though she is technically half demon, so she could fit into this universe. But she is also half angel, so we would have to address now that there's angels and that's a whole thing. Regardless, Akino, Yurichi's mother, made Yuroichi Hanafuda earrings. 
gods. You see, Akino made these Hanafuda earrings so that the gods would bless Yoroichi with the ability to speak. Now, Hanafuda, for those of you who aren't studied up on Japanese lore, is one of the first card games, well, really ever. Unfortunately, though, there is a little bit of historical disconnect between Demon Slayer and reality here, because Hanafuda was introduced to the Japanese by the Portuguese in the 16th century, which would be about the 1500s, aka smack dab in the middle of the Sengoku period. However, Yoroichi was said to exist 500 years before the timeline of Demon Slayer, which would put him somewhere in the 1300s. At the latest, the early 1400s. Regardless of historical context, I really don't understand how Hanafuda earrings would draw the attentions of the gods considering there was no religious aspect of Hanafuda, it was just a card game. But whatever, it's a show about killing demons. Why am I looking this far into it? Back to Yorichi. And maybe these earrings actually worked because when Yorichi turned seven, he smiled and spoke for the first time. And he declared that he was gonna become a samurai just like his brother, Machikatsu. Machikatsu kind of laughed this off because he knew knew that his brother was going to be sent to the temple when he was 10, only three years from now. However, one of the men that was training Michikatsu that worked for Michikatsu's father decided to humor Yurichi and showed Yurichi a basic stance. However, once Yurichi got a sword in his hand and knew the basic stance, flew at the man and landed four blows on him immediately. This is a seven-year-old fighting a full-grown man. Michikatsu, by the way, had never successfully landed even one blow on this man. However, Yurichi didn't like the feeling of hitting somebody with a sword, and so he instantly renounced his idea of becoming a samurai. But Michikatsu was blown away and curious as to how Yurichi managed to land all of these blows. And essentially, what Yurichi explained to him was a rudimentary explanation of the first ever breathing technique. Unfortunately, things kind of get worse for the brothers here pretty quickly. Akino, once again, not the half demon, half angel, their mother passes away from illness. And once she passes away, Yurichi sneaks into Michikatsu's room to bid him farewell because he's leaving the house and he wanted to bid his brother farewell. And after Yurichi leaves, Michikatsu realizes a couple of things about him. One, Yurichi leaves his diary, which reveals to Michikatsu that Yurichi could see his mother's illness weakening her left side. This is why throughout the entire duration of their childhood, Yurichi was clutching onto her left side. He was trying to help to support her. He could see this because he always had access to transparent world. So he could see the muscles in her left side weakening. And secondly, he found out through this diary that his father was going to name Yurichi the heir. You see, his father had been very impressed with Yurichi's ability to pick up swordsmanship so quickly. But if Yurichi is the heir, that means Michikatsu is getting sent to the temple. So Yurichi ran from the compound to make sure Michikatsu got to live the life that he should. And while most people would find that incredibly nice and beautiful, Michikatsu is a bit of a Sasuke. And instead of having the regular human response of being like, oh my God, that's one of the nicest things anybody could ever do for anybody ever he decides to hate Yurichi. Yurichi then runs away from the compound for one full day and one full night, straight into the mountains. He then stays away from the compound for 10 full years. And I'm not gonna tell you why he decides to pick up a sword again, because it is a spoiler, but uh, he picks up a sword again, specifically to kill demons. And this is actually where he bumps back into his brother, Michikatsu. You see, Michikatsu had become a samurai and was in a samurai encampment when a demon strolled into their samurai encampment and killed literally everyone but him. It was at this point that Yoroichi saved Michikatsu once again. Essentially, Yoroichi comes upon the slaughter and he sees the demon and kills it effortlessly. He then apologizes to Michikatsu that he wasn't there quicker and for the death of his men. And it was at this point that Yoroichi and Michikatsu became demon slayers. You see, Yoroichi was an incredibly talented demon slayer because he had accidentally created sun breathing. But if somebody can create sun breathing accidentally, it shouldn't be that hard to pass it along, right? Wrong. Yoroichi tried to teach sun breathing to many other demon slayers, but nobody could match his technique perfectly because nobody else had access to transparent world. But Yoroichi wasn't phased by this. He adapted sun breathing to every single one of his disciples, creating water, wind, flame, stone, and lightning breathing. Thunder breathing. It should be lightning breathing. And then the best of these demon slayers in their respective breathing techniques became the Hashira. So what did Michikatsu learn? Well, he couldn't learn sun breathing just like the rest of them because once again, no access to transparent world. I mean, there's other factors into sun breathing that aren't transparent world, but trust me, transparent world helps a lot. But Michikatsu didn't learn one of those five techniques. No, he actually created his own technique just like his brother, but his technique was called moon breathing. And that is as far as I'm gonna go into the backstory of Yurichi. We'll do a you know nothing about him at some point, but that'll be a more spoiler forward episode. Basically, all you need to know is that Yurichi accidentally made sun breathing and because nobody else could learn it 
every other breathing technique was created by him except for moon breathing and i guess all later iterations like insect breathing and beast breathing those were technically created by other people but they are based off the breathing techniques he created i lied we actually have to talk about yorichi a little more yorichi goes through a lot as a demon slayer and eventually is kind of exiled and once you get exiled from your life scholar you're gonna have a lot on your mind so in order to clear his head he went to go talk with his only friends suyaku and sumiyoshi whose last name happens to be what Kamado. Yorichi asked Suyaku to perform the techniques of sun breathing. And much to Yorichi's surprise, Suyaku could do them with so much grace that Yorichi actually thought Suyaku was a spirit and not a human. And Sumiyoshi watched Suyaku use these techniques with wonder. And after Yorichi had cleared his head after a couple of days with the Kamados, he gave his Hanafuda earrings to Sumiyoshi. Suyaku and Sumiyoshi, realizing this is the last time they would ever see Yorichi, called out to him as he was walking away and said that they would preserve his techniques throughout the generations of their family out of respect to him. So these great, 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 great ancestors of Tanjiro received their Hanafuda earrings from Yorichi, which were gifted to him so he could receive the gift of speech from the gods. And the Hinokami Kagura was passed down as respect to a man who saw no worth in himself. And that's why Tanjiro's father would dance the Hinokami Kagura, and that's why Tanjiro picked it up. But what is sun breathing really? I mean, we've talked about the history of it now and how it got to Tanjiro, but what is it? We know that sun breathing is reliant on one strike over the head attacks. We know that water breathing is about bending your elbows and wrists in a flowing consecutive motion. We know that insect breathing is about jabbing your opponent with a needle filled with wisteria poison. But inherently, what is sun breathing? Well, sun breathing has 12 forms, but these 12 forms don't fall into one category, like with insect breathing or fire breathing. They are not just thrusts or singular attacks. Sun breathing is considered the perfect mix of offense and defense, and therefore all other breathing techniques are based off of this technique. Therefore, every other breathing technique you've seen throughout the duration of Demon Slayer, you can see in sun breathing. And the mangaka actually does an incredible job with this. Take, for example, sun breathing's eighth form, sunflower thrust. This is exactly what it sounds like, a singular thrust of the tip of the blade. But this is reminiscent of insect breathing. Or look at sun breathing's sixth form. Fun fact about Nick, he can't say the word sick. I know it's supposed to be six, but every time I try to say it, it just comes out sixth. Regardless, the form after the fifth one is called Solar Heat Haze. And this is an attack where the user charges at you and launches a slash at you that appears as though it's covered in haze. And even though the slash appears to not land, it actually does. And this is reminiscent of mist breathing. Essentially, by moving in an unpredictable manner at high speeds, you can make your blade seem as though it's somewhere it's not. Or sun breathing's 10th form, fire wheel, which is just water wheel with fire. Essentially, every single technique is wrapped into sun breathing because every technique was taken out of sun breathing. People weren't able to learn the entirety of sun breathing from Yurichi, but they were able to take small bits from it and build an entire breathing technique based off that bit. That is how all-encompassing sun breathing is. You can take 10% of it and build an entire breathing technique based off that 10%. But there's something else that's special about sun breathing. There is 12 unique techniques. In each of these 12 techniques is their own attack, like a thrust or a slash or a circle. But unlike every other breathing technique, there is an additional technique that doesn't have its own individual move. What do I mean by that? It's a good question. The 13th technique of sun breathing essentially takes all 12 of the sun breathing techniques and uses them in consecutive fashion. Essentially, think of the 13th technique like looking at the other 12 techniques and reading them off a list. Yoroichi would use the first technique, then the second technique, then the third technique, and so on and so forth, all in consecutive in flowing motion. And by using all of these techniques in a consecutive fashion, you can do them with more agility, accuracy, and less fatigue. But was this technique just created so you could use a bunch of sword techniques really quickly? I mean, sort of, but the number 12 is also very important. You see, this 13th technique technique was created to kill one person in one person alone. Muzan. You see, Muzan has 12 vital organs, seven hearts and five brains. And these seven hearts and five brains are actually always moving around his body. Inosuke isn't the only person who can rearrange his guts. So by combining all 12 breathing techniques of sun breathing in a consecutive fashion, you would be able to destroy all 12 of Muzan's vital organs. And this 13th form is the Hinokami Kagura. 
Essentially, the dance that the Commodos do is this 13th form. It is a combination of the 12 techniques of sun breathing done in repetition. And this is why the Commodos could do it all night long, even if they were sickly like Tanjiro's father. Because once again, by combining these 12 techniques and using breathing techniques, it would reduce fatigue massively, essentially making you able to spam this 13th technique over and over and over again. So while the Commodos weren't necessarily practicing individual techniques, they were practicing all 12 of them at once. And what's a really cool little fun fact here is that the Hinokami Kagura is actually inspired by Shinto mythology. Yes, Kishimoto wasn't the only person who takes inspiration from Japanese folklore. You see, the Kagura ritual was actually created when Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun, retreated into a cave. And since she was the goddess of the sun, her retreating into a cave cast the entire world into darkness. The world being cast into darkness, for those of you who live in your basements, would be a very bad thing. Well, it seems like fun at first, it's not. So in order to save the world, Ami no Uzume, the goddess of revelry and dawn, hatched a plan. Ami no Uzume danced outside of the cave in order to entice Amaterasu out of it. And from this dance, the Kagura was born. You see, the Kagura in Japan is a ritualistic dance in order to serve honor to the gods, specifically the sun god. And if you can't see the connection there, then there's nothing I can do for you. And that's it. Basically everything you need to know about sun breathing in the most spoiler free way I could do. Unfortunately, there's going to be some spoiler-esque things, but that's only just so I can give you exposition on what I'm talking about. I avoided deaths and plot twists and all of that, so you should be good. If anything you're just better informed now and if you feel better about being better informed guys please once again for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell listen while a lot of people might think that akano is the best girl from high school dxd and i can't fault them for that you're absolutely tripping if you don't think it's zenobia i'm sorry